add about two and a half cups of flour here. And I also have one and a half cups of sifted flour for our hot cross buns. You have to have two separate bowls of flour because you add the flour at different times. So to begin with, we're going to have our dry ingredients together. So we have one and a half cups of sifted flour. I have two packets of dried, instant dried yeast here. And here I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then into a saucepan, I'm putting a half a cup of oil, regular cooking oil. I have a third of a cup of sugar here. To that I'm adding three quarters of a cup of milk and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to just very gently cook this for a little while to get the sugar dissolved. You don't want to cook it too fast because you'll scald the milk. Remember, you always need a warm element and a sweet element to activate the yeast. So I'm just going to get this slightly warm. So I'm going to just add that to my dry ingredients. And then in my mixer, I'm going to mix that quite a high speed for a few minutes. So when you've got that all properly combined and everything, we're adding three eggs. Again, do go slowly with the mixer. Try to avoid getting splashed at all costs. Make sure your eggs get really well combined in there. There we go. And to that, I'm going to add my, the rest of my flour, which is, remember, two and a half cups of sifted flour. Raise the sieve quite high to get as much air in there as you can. And I've been using um, some baker's flour, lotus baker's flour, and it's already, it's pre-sifted as well, so we're getting a lot of air happening. And with a spoon, I'm just going to combine the flour and add two-thirds of a cup of currants. Make sure you get it well and truly mixed up. I'm going to get my hands in there now. I actually quite like the tactile side of cooking. I like to feel what I'm doing. So I'm sprinkling some flour on the board. And then we're basically going to very gently combine everything, pulling some of the dry flour into the mixture so you get a nice ball of dough. You want to have a nice generous amount of flour on your board. This is just kneading very slightly. Pulling the dough from the outside in and rocking it back. Pull in and rock back. And then, so I've got a nice round of dough there, and I'm popping that into an oiled mixing bowl, and then I'm covering that with a tea towel and putting that aside for about the next hour and a half to raise. Once you've let the dough rise, um, which can take an hour and a half, it can take less, you really just want to make sure it's doubled in size. What we're going to do is turn that out onto a floured surface. And literally, I'm just going to punch out all the air. And then cover it up and just leave that to rise again for about 10 minutes. So let's have a look now and see how we've got along. My dough has risen again, so it's now ready for me to sort of divide up into my buns. I'll get my greased baking sheet and with each of these pieces I'm just going to put it into my hand, into the palm of my hand and fold inwards like a small kneading but very gently until I have a really nice smooth surface on the bottom and then I'm going to put that on my baking sheet. 
So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to cover them up again and let them rise for another 30 minutes. And now we are seeing light at the end of the hot cross bun tunnel. I'm going to get a sharp knife and I'm going to cut a cross in each of my bits of dough without squashing them too much. And then I'm going to get one egg white, which I'm just going to beat up a little bit. And then with my pastry brush, I'm literally going to glaze, gently glaze all the tops of my buns. And you'll find that when they go into bake, that's what gives them that lovely, beautiful golden gloss. We're going to pop this in the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. With my remaining egg white, I'm going to make the icing that goes on the surface of the hot cross buns. And when you've got it to the right consistency, which is kind of pasty, I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to get my icing into a piping bag. really don't need that much icing because we're just going to do little icing crosses on the top of everything. Perfect. They smell beautiful. As I told you, they're a bit uh, of a hodgepodge of sizes here, but never mind. And they've all got a cross in the top, you can see. So with my icing, I'm going to literally just pipe a little cross into the cross that's already there. There we go. And there you have it. Easter hot cross buns.